Before we begin, a quick word from our sponsor, Warpath. Warpath is a real-time war strategy game inspired by World War II. This game has an astonishing storyline inspired by real events such as the defense of Moscow and Normandy landings. The fun thing about this game is that it provides World War II knowledge about tanks and troops and how they were used in real battles. You can use units to upgrade your weapons and tanks and the units are real in history. Warpath has both strategy and real-time PvP. Command your troops to a specific location and start a fight. Simple as that. Warpath has the most balanced mechanics compared to any other similar game. You can be a general in Warpath, unlike in most games where you're just a soldier or a team leader at best. I really like that though the battlefield map is huge, the smart AI allows you to enjoy the game without micromanaging everything, making Warpath one for the strategy gaming fans out there. Use my bonus code for special rewards and invite your friends to join. You might have a chance to win a PS5, Switch and Amazon cards. Check the giveaway link in my description and download Warpath using my link. You are in on now. Flying boats saw very extensive use in World War II by both the Allies and the Axis. They were routinely among the largest aircraft then in service. Flying boats had seen very extensive use in the 1930s as airliners. Flying boats had fulfilled many of the roles of airliners today, ferrying fee-paying passengers on long-haul flights all over the world, the first stage in replacing ocean liners. Compared to ships, the new flying boats were much faster. They could carry a reasonable number of passengers in comfort over great distances, and being flying boats, complex and expensive airports were not required to receive them. For example, the British used the flying boat to knit its empire together, with the introduction in 1937 of the Short Empire. Twenty-eight of these very large flying boats were ordered for Imperial Airways to carry passengers and, most importantly, the mail for the British Empire. Operating from a base at Hythe near Southampton on England's south coast, they established new services to Egypt, East Africa, India and Australia. Three bigger versions were built for the North Atlantic route to the US and Canada. When war broke out, the flying boats were pressed into service as maritime patrol aircraft, in particular in the war against German U-boats. The US Navy's consolidated Catalina and Britain's short Sunderland performed sterling service in this vital role. The Germans and the Japanese also used flying boats, many in an offensive role. For example, Check out my video on the second Pearl Harbor attack in 1942, when two Japanese Kawanishi Emily flying boats undertook the longest distance air attack of World War II. As the war progressed, the use of flying boats and the bomber role diminished, as they were very vulnerable to fighter interception. Instead, the flying boat became more and more a large transport aircraft, able to carry a lot of cargo or troops very long distances over the ocean. The American Martin PBM Mariner had entered service in 1940 and was a successful anti-submarine patrol bomber, the type accounting for 10 German U-boats during the war and seeing extensive service in the Pacific theatre as well. The Glen L. Martin Company decided to develop a very long-range ocean patrol flying boat, and to do this, they simply upscaled the Mariner to create the appropriately named Mars. The prototype first flew in November 1941, and after extensive testing, the Mars emerged not as a bomber, but as a huge transport plane. They were used to ferry military cargo to Hawaii and other Pacific Islands. The Mars was the largest aircraft used by the US in World War II. Its wingspan was over 200 feet, with a length of 117 feet. Standard takeoff weight was 90,000 pounds or 41,000 kilos, though it had a maximum takeoff weight of 165,000 pounds or 75,000 kilos. of a 15-room house with two decks and sleeping accommodations for 36, the Mars can fly to Europe and back non-stop. 
Till total victory, she will speed fighting men and supplies throughout the vast Pacific battlefront. The amount of cargo that the Mars could carry was massive by World War II standards. 133 fully equipped troops, or 84 litter patients, plus 25 medics, or 32,000 pounds or 15,000 kilos of cargo, including space for up to seven Willys jeeps. The massive Mars flying boats were not the largest aircraft used in World War II. That honour went, unsurprisingly, to another flying boat, the German Blom & Foss BV-238. But only one of these gargantuan aircraft ever saw service at the tail end of the war and was destroyed before the surrender. The only major problem with the Mars flying boats was the end of the war in August 1945, before the 20 aircraft ordered by the US Navy had been completed. Hawaii Mars was lost in an accident on Chesapeake Bay, and only five more Mars flying boats were completed up to 1947, when further production was cancelled. Used as heavy cargo haulers, the type set a world record in March 1949 when Caroline Mars carried the largest number of passengers in history up to that point, 269 people making a flight from San Diego to Alameda, California. Sadly, Marshall Mars was destroyed by fire in April 1950, and the remaining four aircraft flew cargo runs from San Francisco to Honolulu in Hawaii until 1956, when they were withdrawn from U.S. Navy service. Left to rot with a view to be scrapped, they were instead sold to a Canadian company and given a new lease of life. Modified, the four Mars flying boats became water bombers for use in putting out forest fires in British Columbia. Modified with huge water tanks, these veteran World War II flying boats remained in service up to the present day. Today, two still remain in service, Marianas Mars having crashed in 1961, and Caroline Mars having been destroyed by a typhoon the year after. Hawaii Mars and Philippine Mars have continued to fight forest fires while efforts have been ongoing to try and preserve one of these sky veterans as a museum. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share, and also visit my audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.